Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day two, the Finance Magnets London Summit. Today we have an exciting session, trading platform solutions, learning from the past, charting the future. Let's give a warm welcome to our distinguished moderator, Alexis Drosiotis, head of Match Trader Platform at Match Trade Technologies. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. Today then with us, we have Ajay, which is the managing director of Infinox. We have Ran, which is the CEO of Leverett, and Alexei, which is the CEO and co-founder of Two for Brokers. Thank you guys for coming. So back in 2005, when I started uh, in the industry, we had lots of operational challenges on the platforms. There was you know, hardware limitations, there was software scalability issues, and everything was done manually. So what challenges did you face, and do you believe any of these challenges are currently still active? Sure. Thank you. Um, I think from a brokerage point of view, technology and platform is the biggest challenge we face. Um, one of the hardest things for us is we set out on a particular path with a technology stack, a platform stack, and as the market evolves and develops, you have great technology coming through from providers and, and great advancements, but we're never really in a position to switch technology from one stack to another. And in between that process of improving and developing, for a brokerage, it's always a challenge. So I would say from the very early days of Infinox through to this morning, it is a constant battle trying to get, uh, trying to keep up with technology and the cross between what our clients want and what providers deliver. Um, so I would say for us, it's the biggest, the biggest operational challenge is that continual development and uh, um, integration, stability, real big challenges for us. So, um what what we saw from uh, let's say 15 years ago till uh, till today is that uh, 15 years ago the the dominant platform was probably desktop mobile was in the very early days so no one had a mobile platform or almost no one um, web was not that developed and um, trading technologies um, in order to to develop a platform you had to work extremely hard it was way underdeveloped now uh, going forward uh, 15 years to today, let's say, then um, on one hand, you have a whole set of devices you need to develop for, for desktop and for web and for so many different mobile devices. We'll probably talk, talk about it uh, uh, later today. And um, on the other hand, trading technology became more accessible and a bit um, easier, I would say. So it's not easy to develop a trading platform, but, but it's definitely a different story than it was 15 years ago. So I would say that uh, it's more or less the same challenge, just, just looking, it, uh, looking at it from different angles. Yeah, and what I could say from technology point of view, so that 15 years ago, it was only about a fixed trading, so the equities, futures was not on this table. And currently, the brokerage companies face the issue that need to cover, co find to find a multi-asset platform because if you focus only on one asset type, so you will not be able to succeed because traders nowadays are not focused only on one. They want to cover all the available assets. And especially when it comes to a younger generation, they want to go like some modern assets as well, like crypto and et cetera. So you need to go this trend, otherwise you will be fail it or everybody, everybody forget about you. So. And from technology point of view, uh, as a company who provides services to the brokerage companies, we see that we need to be able to follow this trend and adopt even faster than the brokerage companies because we need to be on the top of the trend and be able to offer them these top-notch technologies so they will be able to follow it and offer their retail clients uh, as much as possible. Thank you. Now, trading platforms are, you know, they're changing fast, they're evolving fast. And it's the users and it's the brokers that are actually helping us, you know, evolve. So, how is this user feedback that we're getting, uh, you know, driving the evolution of trading platforms? And what feedback is the most common, and which feedback is the most useful? Regan, it's interesting that you you put it this way that clients are driving the demand for changes in platforms. But I think, I see it slightly differently. I think it's actually driven by a lot of the innovators in the industry. Um, clients get to see what's being innovated. And ultimately, it's those innovations that put the pressure on the brokerages to adopt and improve and, uh, and to keep up with it. 
Um, so I don't really see it as a client-side driven um, part, but the challenge is when someone who makes a perfect product delivers it to us, but sometimes or most of the time for the client, it's not perfect. And it's getting the fine tune between that really difficult. But I would say it's always safer and better to be driven by technology providers than client demand. I think we've got to shape what clients see versus clients shaping what we can deliver. I, I think I think it's a mix. <clears throat> it's um, obviously driven by innovators, and at the same time, um, clients' feedbacks. That's something that is extremely important. So, so from the users' point of view, let's say the traders themselves, um, we have a passive feedback, which is more based on uh, platforms, for example, like a Google Tag Manager or Mixpanel, the, that allows us to to monitor the the user journey, the user user flow to have heat maps to understand which features are uh, mostly in use, which ones are confusing, and which ones are completely not in use. We have the feedbacks that are, get that, that are active feedbacks from users, uh, whether directly to the platform providers or uh, through the brokers, of course. Now, from the brokers themselves, um, we, do, we do get very important feedbacks, right? Some of them are more related to operational feedbacks. So if you provide me this, like um, one click uh, rolling of contracts between month, then you'll make my life very easy. So it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a simple operational feature that, that will make everything very efficient. On the other side, you have the revenue boosters, okay? If you allow me to integrate this, if you develop this, then obviously um, I'll be able to generate more revenues. That's what, that, that's what we also see. Uh, and what like we don't work with retail clients a lot because no no it, but your clients are yeah 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 our clients so. work with that and uh, what I think that uh, most important for the brokerage companies to like to track the feedback of the clients and to see what they want it but as my colleagues mentioned we need to like to check it before integrate it immediately because sometimes it's just uh, not good idea to do that fast. Uh, on the same time, uh, brokerages, as I already mentioned, they have to follow the trends, not only about the top-notch technologies and features, but about the trend, like let's say 15 years ago, as we always said, it was laptops, now it's mobile phones, so you have to follow it anyway. And the same with the uh, trading technologies, ad sets, uh, and etc. And clients want to have everything online, synchronized among all their devices and etc. So you just need to follow this trend. Also what I could add, as mentioned about the revenue streams, uh, sometimes you need to find a technology which allow you to attract more clients. For example, it was social trading a few years ago, like prop trading nowadays become very popular and etc. So you could find a technology which will make your clients more interested in trading because as I already told, younger generation, they want something more simplified and gamified uh, from the trading. Okay, because you said, you know, simpler generation. <laughs> uh, now, taking into consideration Generation Z, let's take ages 18 to 26, which are looking for something simpler. Okay, so what are current, you know, platforms, how are they balancing the needs of, you know, novice traders, experienced traders, while also taking into consideration Generation Z that you mentioned. Well, that's interesting because when you look at Gen Z, um, a lot of the products they use nowadays aren't actually high-end developed trading platforms or systems. If you look at some of the apps that are really popular now, they are very, very simplified trading apps. And we probably had those 13 years ago. Um, so it, there is this kind of diversion where by age, oh, age is not the right way to put it, by trading demographic, um, the kind of demand for those products differs. And it's something we were kind of talking about earlier that it's very difficult for us to know, well, to be able to offer our product for all these different types of clients. And this is what we were saying earlier about just being really focused in so many words is what we can deliver, what our technology stack allows us to do, and almost just leave the rest alone. Um, because you can't go from very simplified in one app to you know, almost high-end professional clients in the other. It's, it's too difficult to do that. That's, that's exactly what we see. I think that, that platforms, um, uh, many times, they 
they don't need to cater to all type of different clients and different traders. So, and, and that's okay. What, what we are trying to do is um, to take advantage of our desktop application, for example, the desktop platform, and make it more suitable for professional traders because you, can, you have the ability to use one screen and, and it's a large one. Sometimes it's a set of two or four screens. So, so in my opinion, it's better for the more professional traders. That's the direction that we're taking. When it comes to mobile, I fully agree. Mobile is, is a simple platform that is more suited for the novice traders, for the newcomers. And, and that's also the direction that we are trying to take it. Obviously, we allow clients to use both, no matter who you are, that's also okay. Yeah, and also it's about the audience which you are targeting, because uh, some companies who would like to target more simplified auditory and they would offer uh, solutions which are profitable by this auditory, and uh, it's logical. Even some companies, they have two brands in their own same umbrella, so they do one for the professional traders, another for the uh, Generation Z, as mentioned. And I think it's a good way for the companies because in this case, they don't in a conflict about the marketing, about the application, and etc. So they use the same trading technologies on the behind, but the front end of the applications is very different, and they could advertise it in a very different way and not mix it together. Because when you try to do mixing, you will be in a conflict of the, like, interfaces, about the advertising, about the idea of what you're trying to uh, send to your auditory. Now, given the growing demand, you know, brokers are always demanding. How are trading platforms evolving to, you know, to align with the broker's expectations in the market trends? Because, you know, trading platforms now isn't just, you know, it's not a buy and a sell anymore. What we're trying to build is, you know, an ecosystem where a broker can come, you know, and find everything. So. I'll start with Ron, and then we'll come back to you, Jay. Um, meeting uh, brokers' expectations, that's a huge uh, topic, I think. It's, um, it's, it's, it's very hard. They, they want to get uh, everything for nothing, basically. And the same day. <laughs> of course, maybe yesterday, right? <laughs> so, so um, uh, but still, but still uh, we are in the business, and this is what we are doing. So, so um, you, mentioned, you mentioned a few things. For example, migration is something that is usually urgent. I need it today, and I need it for tomorrow, or, or for today. So, so with migration, what we are trying to do is we are trying to do it with a dedicated team. For example, this is also what we are doing with professional services. We are trying not to interrupt the, uh, uh, the main train of development of the whole uh, uh, suite of products. Um, but still, we are trying to satisfy our clients at the same time. Um, regarding market trends, I would say that what we are trying to do besides the internal innovation that, that we mentioned before is product comparison, constant com uh, product comparison, uh, competitive analysis. And, and, and like I said at the beginning, at, at the end of the day, it's very hard to satisfy clients. Uh, at the same time, we are doing our best. Yeah, and uh, like what I could say about this, we, when it comes to serving the brokerages, uh, yeah, Serena is right. So we have clients who want to like, when it comes, for example, white labels, uh, they want to start brokerage business like yesterday. They want it like immediately. And uh, yeah, as long as we provide technical support and all the maintenance of the different trading platforms from Leverate, MatchTrade, MetaTrader, and et cetera. So, and yeah, it's very difficult uh, to make clients happy and because they always ask for more and more and you are going to, you have no choice, you need to follow this and you need to put all your resources to make clients happy. And uh, from trading platform points of view, they, like what I could see from our side that there are two types of clients we have. Some of them don't really care about, let's say, technology. They want to do the business and they want to give us everything. So just do it today and we have no headaches. So another clients, they want to keep all everything on their own hands. They want to control everything, control every technology. So it's different types of the clients in the industry, what we could see. And depending on the request of the clients, we try to adopt our style, how we provide service to that client. Jay, I mm -hmm. think it's up to you now because uh, the platforms are 
talking about the brokers that they're asking too much. What's your opinion on the other side of the story? I'm so glad they have so much respect for us. Um, you know, but it, it is true, though. It, it is difficult because um, as a brokerage, I think if you go down the road of following or trying to keep up with market trends, it's impossible. I mean, that's the whole point about market trends come from innovation, which is meant to be ahead of the curve of where we are. And so I think it's a very difficult game if you think about pl trading platforms, just interfaces, you know, we, I remember we were talking about 3D interfaces, and then we talked about, uh, they've talked about AI interfaces, and they'll be the next thing, and, and that's all great, it's a, re it's a reflection of innovation, but as a brokerage, if you don't follow a good value proposition as the core of your offering, you're always going to be playing catch up, and the moment you miss a beat and you don't have the next new thing, you fall behind the curve, you lose, you lose your business, you lose your proposition. Um, so I think these trends are great, and they make for good content, and they make for good entertaining business. But uh, I think focusing on a value proposition is really important. And I, and I think if we all do that, my colleagues will be happier working with brokerages, um, you know, a bit more stable, a bit more long term. <coughs> now, in an industry where you know independency and customization is, you know, something which is greatly valued. How can trading platforms offer you know, something to unique, unique to brokers? And this question, I'm, I'm going to give to Alexei because I know he wanted to answer it. So it's third-party front-ends connecting to our back-end. So giving, because this is something that we started to do now. So it's giving you know, brokers, allowing them to create their own front-ends so they can you know, offer something unique, push their branding. So how do you see this? Like, it's a two points. First of all, it's like, uh, it's very logical when brokers want to make interface, uh, their own interface, because they will be able to follow their ideology of how they want to serve clients, what they want to offer them, and they have more control in terms of advertising, pushing them to trade, giving more things, and uh, yeah. On the other side, it's a challenge that we all know that most of the traders used to work with top free trading platform and if you try to do something new and totally rebrand it, it will be very difficult to attract clients because when they see something new, they decide, okay, I spent my 10 years trading in one particular platform, why I have to change it now because I already have all the uh, instruments and everything configured so I could just change a broker if I'm not happy with this one. So I think this is like very hard question to be honest. It's not as it goes such easy. Just okay, we want our interface. Let's do this because, um, of course, it gives you much more effort in terms of doing uh, more advertising and more steps of how we want to attract clients. On the same time, you don't you will face these challenges and uh, like it's hard to say what is better from my opinion because you know. I think it's logical for very big companies to start some new their own terminals uh, while they already have the trading platforms and they will be able to offer clients the both and maybe they will choose the old one or the new branded terminal. Uh, for the new clients, uh, new brokerage companies, from my opinion, I will not suggest to develop their own interface because they will spend a lot of huge, uh, huge amount of money for this. At the end of the day, they will need to push the clients to change their environment to something new, and it will be very difficult. So their marketing budget will be much higher. So in this case, they will not be able to survive the competition that with the players on the market, from my opinion. Um, so, so I want to start with um, what's the simple ways to do it. The simple ways to do it is um, offer a very rich set of APIs allow everyone to, to do everything on their side, allow other companies to integrate into your ecosystem. Um, iframes, for example, that's a very easy way for you to enrich your product, to give more, more power to the clients, to the, to the brokers themselves, to have the ability um, uh, to develop more into your product. Now, I do want to relate to, um, uh, to what um, Alexei just said, and I read, uh, an article from you guys, I think, uh, two days ago, okay? And um, it was how to develop, uh, basically, your own front end based... Um, Using our APIs. Correct, correct. Backend, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you read it as well, right? Yeah. So, um, 
so, so basically, first of all, let's admit it. Only a few brokers uh, uh, do it. Now, now, we offer the same. But at the same time, we see, when we look at the big names out there, they do have their own uniqueness and specialty. And I think it's very important. Um, so, so we do allow others to develop their own front end. I think that, that the big ones can do it. And, and from my experience and, and, and from, what, from what we see, we saw it, we saw it more um, on the mobile side. So brokers will use your desktop application because at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's very rich and very complicated. But to develop your own mobile, this is something, this is something that, that we definitely see. And, um, and I'm glad that, that, uh, that uh, you're promoting it as well. Now the broker side, uh, a few which is always demanding. A few years ago, uh, maybe like five years ago, we came out with our own platform. And I mean, it was the bee's knees. It was the best platform we've ever seen. We spent an absolute fortune developing it, fortune on branding. It had all the tools. I even did a webinar on how great this platform was, and it bombed. It was t nobody used it. And, I, and we learned a lot from that. And we learned a lot in the sense that we know what our clients want, and we know the the three or four main platforms in the industry is everything everybody needs. However, we have just done a new product, which is um, a value add on top of the existing platforms that gives clients slightly more personalized content, certainly slightly more personalized features, but it's not there to replace our core offering. It's there as a value add service. Um, and we think for the brokerages, that's where it gets important is when you get a certain demographic of clients that start to demand a little bit extra, a little bit something, then you can go to soft kind of platform technology options and, and add these values for them. But to stray away from core offering, it's very, very difficult. And unless you're going out and saying, we're not actually a broker, we're a platform, I don't think it works. Uh, Ronan, you mentioned before about mobiles. So, you know, it's a world now that, you know, everyone is moving and the only device they always have with them is their phones. So how is this demand for, you know, mobile on the go trading, uh, you know, developing the future of trading platforms? Because, you know, we're always on the go. I think that uh, we all see it both from the uh, trader point of view, broker point of view, platform provider point of view, that, that most of the trades uh, are coming via mobile, most of the traders are using mobile, so it's really astonishing. And, and, um, and when it comes to mobile, it opens you a whole different world of, um, of uh, uh, marketing, for example. So marketing, ma marketing automation for mobile, you can do in, in, a, in a much better way. Um, also, the ways to acquire new clients. When it comes to traditional marketing, we have uh, SEO and PPC and affiliates and IBs. Um, for mobile, it's, um, you can uh, populate your app within the different app stores. Now, we see brokers that approach the broker uh, mobile first approach. And we see brokers that they have only mobile. Okay, that's, that's, that's amazing. Uh, at the same time, we see brokers that look at mobile platform as something that um, they need, but they don't pay attention to it. And I think that's a mistake. I think brokers should, should pay a lot of attention to their mobile app, uh, how it works, get feedbacks from clients. They don't want to get bad reviews. Um, mobile is a simple platform on one side, but, but one of the, of the best revenue generators for the, for the broker on the other side. And from the client's point of view, I think now manual trading is something is will be history in some period of time. So now all, most of the trading is automated or from mobile. So mobile, you have to, you have mobile and you have control everything related to your trading strategies, your portfolio at every moment of your life because we life now is fast. Everybody is somewhere, so you could not sit on the near the desktop all your day. So you rely on some automated tools which trade for you and just you control it from your mobile. And I see it's the trend from like that. So most of people start trading from mobile and then they just look at how they be able to automate it in some period of time and just control it from that. Because uh, laptops, I think it's more for professional traders who do it from the offices like for the whole day and still they don't 
do it manually now. They just need a lot of interf a lot of tools for monitoring of how things are going on, so what's happening and etc. So they do all these monitors around themselves just to understand how market is going on. And for reaction, mobile is enough. So you just need some tools to do that. And it's a very good thing to control what you have on your automated tool on your desktop somewhere when you're out of your office or home and et cetera. Um, I don't think anyone can make an argument against the development of mobiles and trading. Um, but one thing I have noticed is uh, if you go back to the main three or four platform providers, there was quite a lot of similarity between the platforms. So a client could essentially move from broker to broker and have, let's say, 75% familiarity of the different platform variations. With mobiles, the diversity of platform, mobile apps, it's huge. And, and I know I, d I download every single app I see. And, and sometimes I look at an app and, and trading app, and I don't really know what I'm doing for a minute. And, and that's something that we've all got to be really aware of is because the interfaces are so different. On the plus side, revenue side for a brokerage, that's great. Once you've got a client, he likes your platform or she likes your app, great. They're, they're not going anywhere. But the other side of if you think about, let's just call it fairness in the industry, it also makes it very difficult for clients to have choice and to move. And, and so we've just got to be aware that as we develop and become you know, better with apps, that diversity is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So something for us to be very aware of. Thanks. Uh, we're running a bit out of time, so let's get the last point you know, a bit fast. So there's lots of emerging technologies coming out. So we're working now with AI. We're hearing quantum computers that you know can process a great amount of data in seconds. So how do you see you know trading platforms in five years from now with all these emerging technologies? I know it's hard to you know think of how it could be in five years, but yeah. How 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 do you see trading platforms uh, one year from now? <laughs> it's 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 a tough question. I managed to survive a whole panel without the mention of uh, AI, but uh, now I have to do it. So um, AI is definitely changing um, in, in so many ways our life. I'll, I'll mention only one, um, the way to, to communicate with your clients using um, AI, for example, ChatGPT, um, um, your ability to, to talk to your clients, to give them service and support in any language, 24-7, um, fully branded, brand specific, uh, highly professional. That's um, uh, that's uh, that's that's actually really amazing. And um, let's also relate to uh, machine learning. I think that if AI is definitely changing the way that we communicate with our clients, then machine learning can take the role of um, improving the way we trade. And I'm not talking about uh, signals or uh, trading recommendations, but actual feedback based on machine learning. We see already in the market a few products that, that are after it, but um, they can definitely improve the way we trade and make, make the life of the traders uh, easier. Yeah, and from traders' point of view, like we know that uh, automated strategies were on the market for tens of years, so now it will be just added with artificial intelligence and will be adopted with this technology. Uh, that as you mentioned, it will be able to uh, handle like very big data and it will bring new opportunities for the traders and new strategies, so they will be able to analyze data much faster and uh, much more volume will be analyzed. So I think it will bring some new ways of trading and brokers will be ne will be able to adopt to that and to adopt the technologies so maybe it will bring new volumes new uh, more um, trades uh, for the brokerage company so they will need to adopt to that so that's it i think it's a logical step for the industry it's not something we will change it a lot but you know all the things are now uh, involve it into the artificial intelligence. I'll be quick. Um, I'll, I'll look at it from the, the other side, which is actually um, where is hardware, where is technology going? If you think five years ago what, mo what mobiles were and what they are today, you know, in five years' time, what are mobiles going to be? And, and that's going to be a massive influence on what trading platforms will look like on mobiles. So, um, but luckily, we don't worry about that. These guys take care of that, and we just sign up to whatever they sell us. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for our speakers. Amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.